Welcome to Honest News. We've got the power in the name of Jesus. We've Thank you for your support of Honest News Network. In the name of the Lord, though Satan rages, we cannot be defeated. We've got the power in the name of the Lord. Ephesians chapter 1, beginning with verse 3. If you like to follow in the reading of God's Word. Ephesians chapter 1, beginning with verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. It's a lot there, so let's go ahead and read that again. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for all these spiritual blessings. We thank you, Lord, for the true blessings. We thank you, Lord, that it's not something that is going to pass away. It's not something temporal, but it is eternal in the heavens. It is forever. We ask, Lord, that you bless and anoint this message as we minister your word. Bless and anoint your people, Lord, to receive the word. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray. Amen. Heavenly places. How are we going to get into heavenly places in Christ Jesus? Obviously, heavenly places is not here on this earth. So how are we going to be in heavenly places in Christ? How is that going to happen? How does that happen? Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead 
and set him at his own right hand. Where? In heavenly places. In heavenly places. Let's let read Ephesians 1, 3 again. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Now, we just read to you that Christ himself was raised up by the Father into heavenly places. Amen. Let's look at these verses again. These verses are so powerful that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power. Get a hold of that, folks. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Hmm. The exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe according to the working of his mighty power. How are we going to be raised up into heavenly places? Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. My, my, my. Revelation chapter 3, verse 21. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my Father in his throne. Are you listening? Raised up to sit with Christ in his throne. How? By his mighty power. Are you listening? By his mighty power. But God, who is rich in mercy... Ephesians 2, 4, for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace you are saved. Quickened us together with Christ. How are we quickened? By his mighty power. Are you listening? That same power that raised Christ from the dead. That same resurrection power. No wonder Paul was saying, Oh, that I might know him in the power of his resurrection. That's how we're raised up to sit with Christ in his throne. And he hath raised us up together. Listen to this. And made us. Remember we were talking in the previous message, the difference between being set free and made free. He hath raised us up together and made us. 
It's a process. We are being raised up. Are you listening? We are being raised up by the power of God. By the mighty power of God. The exceeding great power of God. He hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Oh, my. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. My, 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 my. Folks, if you can't see that it's a process, amen? You're not just going to be instantly raised up to sit with Christ in his throne. This is a process of development. He's raising us up. Are you listening? What is it? What, what, have you ever heard you're raising a family, right? You're raising up a family. He is raising us up. We're being matured. We're, we're growing. We're developing. He's raising us up to sit with him in his throne. Little babies and children are not going to be sitting with Christ ruling in his throne. He's raising us up. Oh, hallelujah. So what does this look like? Again, Revelation 3.21. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne even as I also overcame and am set down with my Father in his throne. Does everybody get it? Does everybody understand it? Does, there any, does everybody hear this message? Listen to what he said next. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Does everyone have an ear to hear? Obviously not. That's why he said that. He that hath an ear, let him hear. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. He's raising us up. Amen? It's a process. He's growing us up to sit with him in his throne, folks. I want to say this again. It bears repeating. Little babies and children are not going to be sitting with Christ in his throne. Amen. Paul dealt with those in Corinth that he said, look, at a time you should be mature. He says, you're still babes. Still have need of milk. You're still carnal. He said, you should be teachers by now. And you still have need of milk. Revelation chapter 4, verse 4. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting. Does it say babies? Does it say children? No, it says elders sitting. Elders sitting. Clothed in white raiment. And they had on their heads crowns of gold. These are the ones that were made to sit with Christ in his throne. They were raised up. They were grown up by the Spirit. They were matured by the Spirit. They were given nourishment by the Spirit. They were nurtured by the Spirit. And raised up to sit with Christ in his throne. Amen. Revelation chapter 4, verse 10. The four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns 
before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. They have understanding. Amen. Why? Why, Lord? Why were we created? To give him honor and to give him glory. Amen. For his pleasure, not for our own pleasure, not for ourselves. Amen. The elders understand this. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things. Why? Why did God create all things? For thy pleasure they are and were created. Amen. For thy pleasure. Amen. Are you bringing pleasure to the Lord? Amen. Do you do always those things that please him? Amen. We are to be bringing pleasure to the Lord. The Father said of the Son, This is my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased. That's called pleasure, folks. Well pleased. Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. I want you to see a picture of those that have been raised up by the mighty power of God to sit with Christ in his throne. Take a look at this picture. Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. Drop that zero and you've got 24. Isn't that interesting? And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the testimony or the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Now I want you to see the elders. I want you to see those that were raised up to sit with Christ in his throne. I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and what does it say? And judgment was given unto them. Judgment was given to them. Do you not know that you're going to judge angels? Do you think babies are going to be judging angels? Do you think children in the Lord are going to be judging angels? Amen. Some are going to judge with Christ in the throne. Some are going to receive a rod of iron with Christ in the throne. Going to rule the nations with a rod of iron. And I will assure you, this will not be babes. This will not be children. This is going to be those that were raised up. Raised up. Are you getting the message, folks? Just as children are raised up by mama and daddy in a family, God has a family, and some are being raised up to full maturity. Amen? The woman is not giving birth to a baby. In Revelation chapter 12, the woman is not giving birth to a child. Amen. The woman is giving a birth to a man child. The word is huios, and it's in the Greek, and it means fully developed. Fully developed. Oh, I feel his presence. To be raised up, to be matured, to be nourished. Amen. We see the church for three and a half years going to be nourished for the first three and a half years of the tribulation hour. 
They're given two wings of a great eagle. They fly into the wilderness where they're going to be nourished for three and a half years because they will not be nourished now. Amen. The church will not be matured now. They are babes and children. They do not want to grow up. They do not want to develop. So they will not receive nourishment now, but they will later. But there are some in the body of Christ. Remember what Jesus said? Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, notice he's not talking to the church as a whole. He said, if any man, I want you to get this message. That means any man. If any man hear my voice and open the door. He's saying if any man within the church, within that Laodicean church, within that lukewarm church, if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and to him and will sup with him and he with me going to sup with him going to nourish him what does that look like being nourished i remember years ago my pastor said that he prayed and he asked god he said how do i get your people to grow and the lord spoke to my pastor and he said how'd you get your sons to grow did you pull on in their arms? Did you stretch them out? And my pastor said to the Lord, he said, no, I just fed them. And he realized God was saying to him, you need to feed my people. Amen. That's what Brother Joseph's doing. Amen. In hopes that you will develop, that you will grow up in the Lord. Amen. That you'll mature in the spirit. Hallelujah. That you'll become spiritual and not babes, not carnal. Raised up. Raised up. To sit with Christ in his throne. Again, I'm going to say it. Babes and children are not going to be sitting with Christ, ruling and reigning in eternity. Those that have understanding, those that have had their eyes enlightened, those that have the spirit of wisdom and revelation, Amen? Those that have discernment and know the difference between good and evil, those that have been developed in spiritual understanding, they understand the things of God. They understand judgment. They understand righteousness. They understand equity. They understand meekness. They understand these things. They understand humility. They understand judgment. They understand discretion. Oh, I feel his presence. In other words, they know how to be leaders. They know how to rule. How many know you can't rule being unjust? Amen. You can't rule if you're a respecter of persons. Amen. If you're going to rule, it has to be righteous judgment. Has to be just. What did God say about David through the prophet David? What did he say through King David? If any man's going to rule over men, he must be just. You can't be looking for bribes. Amen. You can't be doing it for some alternative motive. Ruling over men is not something that should be taken lightly. And so many do. But ruling in the fear of God, 
with equity and justice, showing mercy. Amen. Listen, brothers and sisters, little babies aren't going to be ruling with Christ. Little children are not going to be ruling with Christ. You remember John had to tell the little children, sin not. Amen. I will tell you this. You won't have to tell an elder in the body of Christ to stop sinning. Amen. You certainly won't have to speak to an elder in the body of Christ the way James did to his church. Sinners and sinners, or sinners and Adulterers and adulteresses. Amen. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. You double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn. Let your joy be turned into mourning. You think those are elders in the body of Christ? No, James is an elder. Amen. James is an elder. What, what is required of an elder? You got to live a holy life. You got to live godly. Godly and holy. Amen. Godliness, holiness, separation from the world, not defiled with the rest of the world in the church that are lukewarm. Amen. An elder. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You really think that the lukewarm are going to sit with Christ in his throne? Don't be foolish. Don't be foolish. The lukewarm are not going to be seen with Christ in his throne. But God is calling out of the lukewarm. If any man hear my voice, amen? We find in Song of Solomon that the same are trying to go to sleep. He's knocking at the door. She said, I arose and went to the door. Open the door. Amen. We got to quit making excuses, brothers and sisters. We got to wake up out of our slumber not fall asleep with all the others that are going to sleep. Answer the call of God, hear his voice, and let him come in and sup with us, amen, and give to us what we need so that we might grow up in him, that we might develop in him, amen. How do you grow in the Lord? How do you develop in the Lord? By revelation. Because when you receive revelation, You come into a realm of knowing things, not seeing through a glass darkly anymore. Knowing, knowledge, knowing. Amen. That's why the scripture says, for him that knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. You start coming into the realm of knowing and God knows that you know, You're in big trouble if you go against that. Amen. But yet God still does not wink at ignorance anymore. There was a time when God winked at ignorance. He doesn't wink at ignorance. God is going to judge ignorance. In the Old Testament, God winked at it. People think today they're going to get away with things because they were ignorant of it. How many know in the word ignorant is the word ignore? You think you're just going to get away with it because you ignore the truth? Just because you turn your ears away from the truth? Oh, well, God will let me get away with something. No. No, you will not get away with anything. Being ignorant is not passable. It's not excusable. It's time to avail yourself. Amen? She made herself ready. While so many today are lukewarm. While so many today are going to sleep. 
There are some in the body of Christ that are diligently seeking him. How do you please God? Diligently seeking him. He's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. How did Enoch walk with God? Diligently seeking him. Diligent. Not slothful. Not lazy. Not lukewarm. Diligently seeking him. Amen? And they're not waiting for God to come to them. It says, they come to God. He that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. Are you drawing near to the Lord? God was getting ready to pour out his wrath upon Sodom and Gomorrah, and the scripture says Abraham drew near to God. Abraham drew near to God. At the time when God's about to pour out his wrath upon this world, are you drawing near to God? Are you diligently seeking him? Or are you part of the lukewarm? Rich, increased with goods, and have need of nothing, you think. And you know not that you are wretched. You are poor, you are blind, you're miserable and naked. And knowest not. And knowest not. That's the saddest part of that whole verse. Knowest not. What did Jesus say about Israel, about the Jews? If you had only known the things that you needed for peace, as he wept over Jerusalem, he says, but now it is hid from your eyes. And knowest not that thou art wretched, poor, blind, miserable, and naked. How are you going to know if you're wretched, poor, blind, miserable, and naked? God's got to reveal that to you. God has to reveal that to you. You can't know on your own. The Lord's got to reveal that to you. Amen? He's got to reveal to you your condition. How many know Isaiah, before he was, before he saw the Lord high and lifted up, his train filling the temple, he didn't see his condition. Amen? He was preaching to others, woe unto you. But when he saw the Lord high and lifted up, his train filled in the temple. What did he cry out? As we all would. Woe is me. That's how you know when you're getting closer to the Lord. Amen. Woe is me. Because when you're in the Lord's presence. You will see your own need. You'll see where you fall short of the glory of God. Woe is me, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For behold, my eyes have seen the king. Just like Daniel when he was praying and interceding for Israel. Daniel said, he made intercession and he was confessing his own sins and the sins of the people. How many know in the Old Testament the high priest was not allowed to go into the Holy of Holies if he had sin in his life? Amen. You think God's just going to wink at sin, folks? Anything that's not of faith is sin. Anything that's not of faith is sin. 
any measure of unbelief or doubt or fear is sin. If we could only see ourselves as we really are before the Lord, then our mouths would be stopped. We would put away the pointing of the finger. Oh, yes. We would walk in humility. We would be broken and contrite. Amen. And we would be judging in the fear of God, ruling in the fear of God. Oh, I feel his presence. How many know the Lord's calling some up right now? Oh, yes. He's calling some up. He's raising some up. Amen. Not all, but some are being raised up to sit with him in his throne. Some would think it would be a great thing to be raised up to sit in a throne on this earth with some earthly king. But I'm not talking to you about an earthly king. I'm talking to you about the king of kings. I'm talking to you about your creator, the one that spoke it all into existence. He says, you can come up here and sit with me in my throne. I'm talking to you, brothers and sisters, about the great I am. I'm talking to you about the almighty God. I'm talking to you about the one that has no beginning and no ending. He is the beginning. He is the ending. He's the alpha. He's the omega. He's the beginning and he's the ending. He's the first. He's the last. He that was dead, yet he liveth. He is God. Brothers and sisters, he says, come up here and sit with me in my throne. Why do we take it so lightly? Why do we take it so lightly? As if a mere man was asking us to sit with him in his throne. Look what men will do in this world to be in the presence of someone that's famous. This is the king. This is the king. The prince of life. Dear God, if we ever needed a revelation of him, if we ever needed brothers and sisters to know him, Paul warned there was another Jesus. Are you listening, folks? There's another Jesus today. And it's not another Jesus. But there's another Jesus that's being sold to the people. And it's not the Jesus that went to Calvary. It's not the Jesus, amen, that rose from the dead the third day morning. It's not that same Jesus. The angel said this same Jesus that you see going up. He's coming back in like manner. I want you to understand he has not, he has not died to not come back. He ever liveth. He ever liveth and maketh intercession for you and I. Hallelujah. Some are not going to get it until he splits the eastern sky. Amen. Some are not going to get it until the sky rolls back like a scroll. Amen. And he comes in his power and his great glory. Amen. And every eye shall see him. Amen. They're going to cry out for the rocks that fall on us, hide us from him, the lamb, from the wrath of the lamb. Amen. For the day of his wrath has come. Some aren't going to get it till then. At his appearing, when he comes, in judgment, how many, how many know just because the knowledge of the Lord is filling the earth at that time doesn't mean folks are going to get saved? Hearts will be so hardened against God. People will be reprobate concerning the faith. You think you can play with God and you're not going to become an enemy of God? Look at Judas. 
Amen. Judas wasn't always an enemy. He chose money over Christ. Now I'm preaching. He chose money over Christ. And sadly, it was only 30 pieces of silver. Amen. Esau, look what he sold out his birthright for. A little bowl of pottage. Oh, dear God, people. It didn't happen overnight for Judas. Little by little. Little by little. You really think the Lord would have had Judas as part of the 12 if he was right from the beginning, he was always going to betray Christ? You think that just because Judas betrayed Christ, he, he had to do it? That somehow God predestined that Judas had to betray Jesus because if he didn't betray Jesus, then Jesus never would have been arrested and crucified. Don't be foolish. Just because God knows the end from the beginning, amen, just because God knows it all, just because he's all-knowing, does not mean that God wanted Judas to do what he did. And I've hear, I hear him today, especially in Hollywood, saying all the time now, Always hearing him say it now. Well, I guess this was supposed to happen. And that's how they live now. People on the earth are living like that. Well, if it happened, I guess it was supposed to happen. This must be what the universe wanted for me. God was, is willing that none should perish. That none would be lost. Jesus tried to reach for Judas called him friend. He did everything he could. So don't ever think just because Judas betrayed Jesus that Jesus wanted him to. That's a lie from the pit of hell, folks. I remember when I first got saved, the devil tried to trick me. God knew you were going to do that. I started making excuses and saying, and well, if God knew I was going to do it, if God knew I couldn't stop from doing it, then God must understand. But he does not understand. What he does understand is that he has made provision for you and I to be delivered from our sins. How many are applying the truth to your life today? To be delivered from your sins, not in your sins. Amen? God has provided for you and I complete deliverance. That is glorious. How many know it's salvation that's glorious? Amen? Deliverance from darkness, from the power of darkness. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But there is another gospel being preached today, a perverted gospel that tells you you can stay in sin and still go to heaven. In fact, they're going as far as saying today, I've heard them, they say it in the Baptist church, and once you're saved, there's nothing you can do about it, you have to go to heaven. Like my pastor said, yeah, I can just see God dragging a bunch of spoiled brats off to heaven that don't want to go. There won't be any sin in heaven. I may know that. Do you know what the Freemasons believe heaven's going to be? The Freemasons believe heaven's a place where you get to have anything and everything you ever wanted. Everything that you ever wanted. Every sinful, every vile, every filthy thing you ever wanted. You'll get to have that over there. That's what they believe heaven's going to be. And then the Muslims, you know what they believe. It's ridiculous that people will sell out the Son of God to believe a lie. 
And folks, as I'm closing, you got to get this. This is not temporal. This is forever. This is not Hollywood. This is not a dream you're going to wake up from. Like the rich man that lifted up his eyes in hell. This is not a parable. This is not a story. This is reality. Your eternal soul. Forever. If more people really believe that, they'd live different. Amen. See, that's the difference. When you come into the knowledge of the truth, when you've really been awakened and you're walking in the truth, you're walking in humility, you're not pointing your finger in judgment, condemning those around you. Hallelujah. The Bible says that Noah was a preacher of righteousness, condemning the world. Noah didn't condemn the world. Preaching righteousness, they were already condemned. Amen? Condemnation is light has come into the world, but men choose darkness rather than the light. That's condemnation. When Jesus came into this world, men were already condemned. He didn't come to condemn. He came to deliver them from condemnation. Deliver them from the condemnation of the law. Amen. Hallelujah. The law came by Moses. That's condemnation. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Not only that you can sing the song Amazing Grace, but that you can experience it. Amen. So many today singing that song that don't even know what it means. They just like the sound of it. Nothing turns my stomach more than to hear some worldly singer, or actor singing that song. They don't have an an inkling of a clue what it means to be saved by grace. How dare they sing that song that the Holy Ghost gave to a man that was lost. Amen. Hallelujah. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost. But now I'm found. Are you listening, folks? It's not just a sweet little song we sing. It's a testimony. Amen. It's a testimony. Amen. No wonder the Lord says to the Laodicean church, I'm going to spew you out. I'm sick to my stomach. I'm going to spew you out. And where is he spewing them out to? into the tribulation hour. They're not going to enter in at that time. The Lord's not going to receive the lukewarm. He's not going to receive those that are worldly. Amen. Hallelujah. He said, I would that you were even cold or hot. Cold. Cold. He'd rather you be cold than lukewarm. You know what he's saying? I'd rather you not even be saved than to say you're saved and you live like the world. 
double-minded, confused. Amen? I'd rather you not be saved. At least I can reach you there. But how do you reach someone that's convinced themselves they're saved when they're not saved? How do you reach someone that's become double-minded? Dear God. Oh, I feel his presence, people. I feel the presence of the Almighty. Time is short. Time is short. And what we do, we must do quickly. We must do quickly. Be quick and repent. Be quick. Be quick to repent. Hallelujah. He says, if you won't, he says, I'll come fight against you. You know what that means? You're no different than the world. You're no different than his enemies. Oh, I feel his presence. I feel his presence, people. I feel the presence of the Holy God. The Lord is reaching for somebody. Oh, hallelujah. He's reaching. He's reaching. Amen. All the day long, the scripture says he's reaching. Stretching out his hands to a gainsaying people. Oh, listen. Hallelujah. He's willing that none should perish, that none should be lost. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Without him, I would be drifting without him I would be lost without him I would be drifting like a ship without a sail without him I would be drifting without him. I would be lost without him. I would be drifting, drifting like a ship without a sail. Without him, I can do nothing. Without him, I'd surely fail. Without him, I would be drifting, drifting like a ship. Without a sail. Are you drifting? Are you drifting? Without him. I could be nothing. Without him. I'd surely fail. Without him, I would be drifting, drifting like a ship without a sail. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many today are drifting? On that muddy sea of sin. 
Oh, I feel his presence. I feel his presence. Are you out there on that muddy sea of sin? Drifting? He reaches down. Amen? He reaches down. He saves us from drowning. Oh, I feel his presence. Hallelujah. Peter said, Lord, save me. And just like that, the Lord reached forth his hand and caught Peter. Amen. What was it that made Peter start to drown? Unbelief. Anything that's not of sin or anything that's not of faith is sin. Unbelief made him start sinking. We got to stop condoning. We got to stop making excuses for unbelief. God is looking for fullness of faith. There's no room for unbelief, folks. There's no room for doubt. No room for fear. If you're going to be in the bride. Amen. He's able to perfect us. To bring us to perfection. Amen. Hallelujah. Perfect. Perfect. In Christ Jesus. Perfected. Complete. Made whole. Perfection. Without fault. Without guile. Holy, unblameable. These are not my words. These are his words. And what he promised, what he promised, what he promised. Yeah, people say things all the time and they don't do what they say they're going to do. Look, when God promises something, he'll do it. Amen? And what he promised, he is well able to perform. Nothing is impossible with God. Hallelujah. He will make good on his word, folks. What he said he'll do, he'll do it. Count him faithful. Abraham counted God faithful. It was accounted to Abraham for righteousness. It was put down to his account for righteousness because he counted God faithful. Do you count God faithful? Are you calling God a liar? Or do you count him faithful? Is God a faithful God? Is God true to his word? If you, if you will count him faithful, he will reward you. You think God is going to reward you good for calling him a liar? Dear God, don't be foolish. We must count him faithful. Oh, I feel the presence of God. Do you really know the Lord, people? You can't get to know him except through the scripture. You've got to get to know him in his word. You've got to believe the word. Amen. You've got to believe the word. He's true and he's faithful. He is faithful. I don't care what this world tells me. I don't care what even God's people are saying. I don't care what others are saying. He is faithful. 
He's faithful. He's true and faithful. Hallelujah. Blessed be his name. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'll say yes, Lord. I'll say yes, yes, yes. I'll say yes, Lord. I'll say yes, Lord. I'll say yes, yes, yes. I'll say yes, Lord. Yes, yes, yes. I'll say yes, Lord. Yes, yes, yes. I'll say yes, Lord. I'll say yes, Lord. I'll say yes. Yes, yes. Oh, yes. Say yes to the Lord. Stop saying no to him. Stop saying no to the Lord. Say yes, Lord, to your will and to your way. I will trust and I'll obey. Say yes, Lord. Here am I. I feel the presence of God. There's some of you, God's been calling you. God's been dealing with you. And you're saying no to him. Say yes, Lord. No matter what he wants, no matter what he's asking of you. You say yes, Lord. You won't be sorry you did. But if you won't say yes to him, you will be sorry. And let me just say this. I'm trying to close. God will never ask you to do something you want to do. Now, that's completely different than the other gospels out there, isn't it? All these false gospel today. God will never ask you to do what you want to do. Welcome to the cross, people. God will always have you do what you don't want to do because that's the cross. Amen. Jesus wanted the cup to pass from him, but he overcame. Not my will, but thy will be done. You can't be saved if you don't do the will of the Father. You better stop believing in hocus and pocus. You can't be saved if you don't do the will of the Father. Many are going to say on that day, Lord, Lord. Only those who do the will of the Father are going to enter into his kingdom. Are you sure, are you certain that you've said yes to the Lord with your life? Have you surrendered all? No matter what the Lord would ask of you. Have you certainly, fully, completely, without reserve, surrendered to the Lord's will? Hallelujah. Don't just shrug it off. Don't just hope to get through the message and get to the end so you can just forget about it until the next message. There may not come another message. This may be your final chance. People think, oh, I got tomorrow. You're not promised tomorrow. Some of you could be listening to this message and today you could be with the Lord or be in hell, depending on where you're at. This day, your soul could be required of you. This day. Have you thought about that? Think about that. This very hour, your soul could be required. Are you ready? 
Are you ready to meet the Lord? I feel his presence, people. You know I, I usually end the message a long time before now. But I feel like the Holy Ghost is reaching. He's reaching. God is reaching. The Lord is stretching out his arms. Oh, I feel his presence. He's dealing. Long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah. He was waiting for the preparing of the ark. Amen. He's reaching. He's reaching. A man of God knows when the Lord is reaching. Amen. A man of God knows when the Holy Ghost is dealing. Hallelujah. I don't have to know all the particulars. I don't need to know who you are. All I've got to do is obey the Lord, folks. But that's what you've got to do. You've got to be obedient to the gospel. You got to do your part. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel his presence. I feel the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come unto Jesus. Give him your life today. Come unto Jesus, let him have his way. I know there are things in your life you think he won't forgive. He'll forgive and forget, my friends, and show you how to live. Don't put it off, my friends. You can't afford to wait. Give your lives to Jesus before it is too late. Come unto Jesus. Give him your life today. Come unto Jesus, let him have his way. I know there are things in your lives you think he won't forgive, but he'll forgive and forget, my friends. Listen to me. With the Lord, there is forgiveness. There is forgiveness. And it's not like the world. The Lord does cast your sin into the sea of his forgetfulness. He does, people. Amen? And if you're backslid from the Lord, your name's been blotted out of the book, he can put it back in there again. Don't believe this lie today. Once saved, always saved. Such hypocrisy. All I got to do is accept Jesus and go back into the world. Is your soul only worth so much to believe such a lie? That you would call God a hypocrite? That you would count the Lord as unfaithful by believing such a lie? That's against his very nature. It's against his very word. No sin is going to enter his kingdom. No rebellion, no stubbornness, no strife. Anything that makes a lie, none of it's going to enter his kingdom. Amen. 
When did you stop believing his words? When did you stop be- when did you stop believing the word of God? When? When did you start turning your ears away from the truth? When did you start looking for teachers to tickle your ears? The word is still the word. Amen. Amen. Just as the Lord can blot a name out of the book of life, he can also put your name back in. Amen. Don't believe that lie that you've gone too far. As long as there's breath in your lungs and you can call upon the name of the Lord, you can be saved. What's it going to be, friend? What's it going to be? Don't put it off. Hallelujah. We've got the power in the name Thank you for your support of Honest News Network. In the name of the Lord, though Satan rages, we cannot be defeated. We've got the 